In the anime community, the brotherhood treatment is a widely known uh, treatment, for lack of a better word. The idea of readapting an anime that didn't get the chance to shine as much as it was supposed to sounds like a very nice one, and in many ways it's a great practice, but this treatment tends to follow a certain trend. One of a heavily rushed beginning, a segment where the quality of the show improves, and then delivering on the ending that was both in the manga and absent from the original anime adaptation of this same manga. And always without fail, the new adaptation is held in high esteem, or at least higher esteem than the original one. Now, when criticizing this certain treatment for a rush beginning, you'll always get people who say, Oh, hey, the new adaptation is rushing through material to make time for the ending. It expects you to have knowledge of the original source material and adaptation, which is why it's completely justified for the anime to rush through material in the beginning. Sorry if I came off as a bit rude there, but I've heard this argument so many times in response to my Shaman King video, so I'm really tired of getting the same comment over and over again. Let me just say this argument is complete hogwash. This very common defense can be picked apart easily with three major points. 1. It completely contradicts itself. This argument only exists to provide a counterargument to people who decide to criticize the dumb practices of this very beloved treatment. Whenever someone criticizes the beginning of, let's say, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, someone will reply with, well, you can't criticize this part of the anime because it was intentionally made poorly. Which is stupid. If a studio intentionally half-asses the first part of a 63-episode show, then why is it unfair to criticize that? Wouldn't it be even more reason to double down on that part of the series and point out its flaws in an accurate way? I hate that I have to do this, but criticism is the act of taking the weakest parts of a piece of art, whether it be an anime, book, movie, manga, whatever, and pointing out that it's the weakest part of that specific piece. If you can't criticize the weakest elements of, let's say, a show, then what are you supposed to criticize? If we went by this mentality for all pieces of medium, then the only pieces of fair criticism that would be left in this world would be little nitpicks in plot and style. Whether you like it or not, the weakest parts of a show are still a part of that show, and people are are absolutely allowed to point out the flaws in that part of the show. I'm going to say this bluntly, but there is no justifiable reason to praise utterly botched material, even if it's intentional. No, especially if it's intentional. I mean, how would people react if the first 13 episodes of shows like Neon Genesis Evangelion or Steinsgate were poorly put together summaries of the entire plot up until a certain point? And you may say, well, it's not fair to compare FMAB, a long-running shonen series, to shows like that, which is complete bullshit because it's not the genre that matters, it's the execution of that genre, but fine. What if Naruto, Bleach, or One Piece completely rushed through its first 13 episodes? Nobody would care about these shows. They wouldn't be a part of the big three, because there's no reason to care. This blatant rushing of the material makes it so that there's less time for characterization, less time to set up the plot of the story, less time for pretty much anything the start of a show is supposed to do. For crying out loud, it's the beginning of the show that's supposed to hook the audience. It's not like there's a disclaimer at the beginning of each episode of Brotherhood that says you need to watch the original adaptation to enjoy this one, newcomers can't possibly be expected to know that before starting. You know why? Because it's never made clear to them. In fact, it's never made clear to anyone. This is something that was just made up by a bunch of people defending Brotherhood, and it's only brought up if someone has a problem with their beloved show. If this adaptation can't draw in all kinds of people, not just people who are already familiar with the material, then it fails as an adaptation, and all of this is even assuming that the argument is true, which it isn't. This brings me to my second point, the fact that this argument has already been debunked before. It's pretty clear from the get-go that shows like FMAB and Shaman King 2021 don't expect you to have knowledge of the original source material while watching, because if they did, then they wouldn't even bother readapting the material at the beginning. All they would have to do is release an official statement saying that this new adaptation is meant to be experienced by people who are already familiar with the story, and start from the point where the original adaptation started to heavily digress from the manga. So why go through the trouble of going back and doing the beginning of the manga all over again if it really is so time-consuming? The reason? They want this adaptation to stand on its own, independent of the original adaptation. After all, when a studio makes a movie to go along with their anime, like Pokemon, My Hero Academia, Fairy Tale, Bunny Girl Senpai, FMA 2003, and ironically, FMA Brotherhood, you don't see a rush summary of the first few episodes before getting into the plot of the movie, you just get the movie. You know why? Because these anime movies expect
expect you to have knowledge of the setting, characters, base premise, and abilities of the main characters of the anime that this movie goes along with. You want to know why people don't defend these movies by saying that you need knowledge of the anime that it goes along with? Because it's common sense and completely fucking obvious. What isn't common sense is defending FMAB, Shaman King 2021, etc. with the same kind of logic because it doesn't work. And if you say that that's just speculation, there's literally an interview from Anime News Network that documents the director of Brotherhood saying that the existence of the original adaptation did not influence his decisions while making the beginning of Brotherhood at all. Funny how so many people are wrapped up in this misconception while being completely ignorant of the facts. I hate it when people just use this defense all willy-nilly without actually bothering to check if it's true. They just heard someone else say it and they believed it because there can't possibly be anything wrong with the Brotherhood treatment. Everyone loves it. FMAB has the highest rating on Mal, so it has to be a flawless show. Sorry, Brotherhood fans who watch these videos, I'm just using the show as a prime example because it's by far the most popular out of all of the new adaptations. It's baffling how so many people defend a rushed beginning with such a flimsy argument. Which brings me to my final point. There is simply no justifiable reason to rush through material. What confuses me most about this argument is that it basically praises a studio for being lazy. When a show that doesn't have multiple adaptations has a very rushed storyline or plot thread, viewers are quick to call it out. Just look at God of High School. So many people are saying that it moves too fast for anything to register. So many characters are introduced without any time to flesh them out. But when it comes to Brotherhood, Shaman King 2021, or Hunter x Hunter, it's an exception. And the reason why it's an exception is the dumbest thing ever. Again, sorry, but when it comes to FMAB, people commonly say that since Studio Bones already adapted FMA once, they reasonably decided to not try as hard for the newer adaptation. Forgive me for saying this, but if the people who make the anime don't even care about the quality of it, then why should we as an audience care about it? Just because there's something to draw a reference from doesn't mean that it should be treated differently. What scares me the most about the Brotherhood treatment is that one day, let's say Promise Neverland will get a new adaptation announced in the future. I'm worried that once TPN Brotherhood faithfully adapts the manga at the end with a rushed first season, people will hold it above the original adaptation and forget how great and amazing the first season of the Promise Neverland really was. Judging the shows that get the Brotherhood treatment with an entirely different metric than other shows makes for a flawed system. One where great direction and vision is easily replaced by faithfulness and mediocrity. It's crazy how so many people in the anime community will get mad over a silent voice getting beaten out by Boss Baby in the Oscars, that we live in a world where people want anime to be seen as a work of art, which it rightfully should, yet we don't even treat anime as art ourselves. I mean, when Da Vinci was painting the Mona Lisa, do you think it would have been alright for him to not even try on the first half of his painting, while making the second half the most beautiful thing in the world? And I know that's an extreme analogy, and anime isn't the same as a painting, but it cements an image in your mind. It really does. You don't hear Rotten Tomatoes or just your average moviegoer give a movie a 90% even though its first hour is atrocious. A TV show? What if The Office couldn't properly establish the distinct personalities of Michael, Jim, Dwight, etc.? Then it wouldn't work. The same kind of logic applies to anime. If the beginning is rushed, then there's no point in someone staying throughout the whole thing. Unless you're planning to make a video about a certain show comparing it to the original adaptation in the future. <clears throat> In conclusion, the argument that many people use to defend the Brotherhood treatment is extremely flawed and hypocritical, and on top of that, it isn't even true. It's just a cop-out that a lot of people are on board with so they don't have to actually face the facts and say that a certain part of their favorite show is pretty terrible. Sorry for this rather aggressive video, I'm just really annoyed by how many people come into my Shaman King video and tell me the same thing over and over again. Anyways, thanks for watching all the way through, and I'll be going now.